Hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Ruslan Rozaliev. I came here from the heart of the Eurasia, from Kazakhstan. Uh, but I'm not. But here I'm not alone. Uh, I came with my colleagues uh, Vera Voronova and uh, Alena Shmalenka. <laughs> we are working uh, for the Association for the Conservation of Biodiversity of Kazakhstan, and um, we are representatives of the young generation of conservationists. Uh, so today we want to tell you the story about, uh, I think, one of the most important conservation projects. It's called Altundala Conservation Initiative. Uh, Altundala means uh, golden step in Kazakh language. So uh, we prepared a slideshow uh, with the music. The music that you will hear uh, played on Dombra. Dombra is a traditional um, uh, instrument of uh, nomads. So I hope that this music will help you to um, feel the step. So I'd like to um, take you for a journey uh, from Salamanca to um, Golden Step. Enjoy, please.
Ten years ago, when I was tracking saiga antelopes in central Kazakhstan, the steppe was pretty empty. Heavy poaching had not only brought about the decline of saigas, but of all large mammals. And today, it's with great happiness to see that at times the steppe in Asindala reminds me much more of the Serengeti. And this is thanks to the hard work of many partners, from rangers and scientists on the ground right up to the government of Kazakhstan. So well done everybody, not least ACBK team in Salamanca. Yes, thank you very much for your attention and for this opportunity. For me, it's a great honor to be here with all of you. And for the second part of our presentation, I want to invite Mikhail Bromba here. Hello, everybody. And I have to say that it fills me to see these pictures. I've seen uh, Fred this morning on, on the stage. and. Um, it was eight years ago when we were in the steppes in Kazakhstan. We traveled several thousands of kilometers, um, and we could hardly see any saiga. We saw one saiga running away on the horizon. Um, and now we see these images. Our teams have to stop sometimes because they are surrounded by 20,000 saigas. And eight years ago, nobody would have uh, believed that such a success could happen. Um, And um, as Ruthline said, it's, it's thanks to the efforts of a partnership, but it's thanks to the efforts of um, especially the Kazakh government who decided that they want to protect this species, that they want to take their um, um, responsibility to protect steppe ecosystems. And I think the Kazakh government had done an, an excellent and wonderful job. Um, I quickly want to introduce, introduce myself. My name is Michael Brombacher, as Magnus said, and uh, I'm heading the European Department of Frankfurt Zoological Society. Um, I worked and lived in Kazakhstan for many years, for over a decade. I worked there for over a decade. I lived there for a few less years. And um, now I'm trying to scaling down the Kazakh dimensions to uh, what is possible in a, in a more densely populated area in Europe, and that's quite a challenge. Um, the topic I'm talking about is, is um, a threat we are facing, um, a, a new development which we hadn't on the radar eight years ago, and it has to do with um, economic growth, with economic development, um, and it's really a, a threat to Altindala, it's a threat to Saigas, um, and I think now we have to put all our forces together to, uh, to deal with these issues and, and, and to mitigate the negative effects. Um, before I, I talk about transport corridors and, and pipelines that are built now across Kazakhstan and other threats, I want to remind us um, of something which, which is also linked uh, to economical development, to growth. It's the demand on the Saiga Horn. We heard about the, um, the rhino crisis, the tsunami of poaching in, in Africa. And we should not forget that um, when you look at um, uh, um, analyzes on, on uh, traditional medicines in, in Vietnam or in, in China, when you have a rhino horn um, in, in, in the substance, you also find a Saiga Horn. And that's something which is forgotten. And we should not forget about the Saiga and, and one of the biggest threats to the Saiga antelope. Um, I was asked to speak about these new developments and, and, and this new threat to uh, grassland ecosystems in Central Asia that also includes Mongolia. Um, and that is linked to um, two developments. One is actually, actually the uh, exploitation of natural resources, of minerals, of gas, oil um, in this region. It's, it's, a, it's a mineral rich region. Um, and over the, the last uh, 10 years, we have seen massive development um, and, and massive new exploitation sites. And these goods need to be transported uh, to the markets, uh, to, to the east and to the west. Um, but also, we have seen that um, Chinese producers moved from the coast to the east of the country, closer to the European markets. And um, that had, well, as a consequence, um, 
brought with it that we have um, new transport corridors being built or bound to be built. And this is a quote uh, from, from the Kazakh government uh, on how much they want to increase over the next years the amount of containers, tra uh, goods transported through their country to their Western markets. Not to the markets of uh, Kazakh industry, but of, of the markets of the Chinese industry. A um, couple of weeks ago, we have seen this picture, picture in German, you, uh, German news. Um, it's the arrival of the first train from Eastern China in Germany, the first container freight train uh, passing through Kazakhstan. It was a big event. Um, and the advantage of transporting goods by train is, is uh, that it's faster. You can be more flexible. Um, and well, probably soon it will be also cheaper to go uh, on, on, on go by train. This is the impact we see on Saiga Habitat. The, on red, uh, marked red, you can see the newly planned railways already under construction. So they, they pass right through the Saiga Habitat. Um, and these are plans promoted by the European Union. Um, for new transport routes through Kazakhstan, through Central Asia, and I've marked in red what is actually uh, in, in, in the planning state. And Kazakhstan alone will have another almost about one and a half thousand kilometers of newly built railways. We have seen all the work that has been done by uh, ACBK and the team of ACBK, the groundbreaking research. Our di data show us um, what is the impact, and it's a very, very good uh, tool for well, at least trying to negotiate bypasses or to mitigate um, the, the effects of the railway. And this is a picture from the US, but this is what happens if there will be railways crossing migration uh, routes. It's, it's not the, the track itself, it's collision with trains, it's settlements, it's fences, and other sort of uh, adjacent um, um, mechanisms that, that cause problems to migrating animals. And what we propose, and I will show you the link to a study which we have commissioned um, and, and released recently. What we propose, of course, which we try to lobby for a bypass, it's very difficult if a country wants to promote growth, wants to promote um, the, 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 as a, itself as a transport corridor. Um, we try to reduce settlements, we try to avoid fencing, we try to uh, create um, these potential Saiga crossing options um, embankments which allow Saigas to cross uh, the, these railway routes. It's a tough job um, and it, it requires a lot of uh, lobbying work and, and background lobbying work which we do with other partners with CMS and uh, we hope we are successful. Another issue maybe less uh, difficult on the long term because these pipelines are buried underground, so not a problem for Saiga to cross, but while they are built um, and, and if they pass through uh, a migration area or mig migrate, well, an important migratory area, this causes problems um, if it's not buried before the winter when Saiga cannot pass these areas. Um, another development, development which we have seen and which is also promoted by European Union and European governments even is border fences. Um, so we have seen the construction of border, border fences in, in, in Central Asia recently. Um, and this is what happens. Saigas find a hole, but it takes them quite a while. And we are pretty sure that these holes will be closed or the, the fence will be um, um, made more um, stable so the Saiga can't pass anymore these areas. Um, so that's also something new and we have to deal with. And um, there are solutions also for border fences. There are plenty of solutions, which all are part of the report we, which we have produced. This is just one option to take off the two lower wires. You still can avoid that cars pass through the, fa the fence um, and antelopes or well, cygars can still go under, under the, the, the bottom uh, wire line. There's much more to find. I think it's an important issue because we face uh, infrastructure development all across Central Asia. Um, there are experiences from other countries. Um, we know that fences are a big issue and luckily fences are not an issue in, in Central Asia still. Um, you can download this report on the CMS website um, and you find a lot of information and a lot of mitigation proposals for transport corridors but also for fences. Thank you.